What's up? My name is Technova here for Troubleshoot and welcome to a Season 11 Optimization Guide for Apex Legends. This video is not going to be too different to the previous one, but if you haven't optimized your game yet, now's a great time to do so. So before we even start with the guide, as per usual, I highly recommend updating Windows and of course your graphics drivers as well. Now there's a lot of debate whether you should upgrade to Windows 11 or not. I personally have tried both and I just find Windows 10 to be more user-friendly and just better for my workflow, so that's what I use. There may be a small difference between 10 and 11, though do note that if you are upgrading, it's a better idea to clean install Windows 11 as it will gain you a couple of extra FPS and performance absolutely everywhere. But with that debate out of the way for now, the first thing that you should do before you try and optimize the game is of course make sure your graphic drivers are completely up to date. Now of course I can't show you this for AMD, but for Nvidia users you'll find a link in the description down below to download the latest drivers. Now of course if you have it and you'd like, you can use Nvidia GeForce Experience to update your drivers, but I don't personally like it so I download them manually off the website. Of course if you already know how this works, you can skip forward in the video. If you don't however, in the description down below you'll find a link to NVIDIA's website. Head across to this page, then enter your graphics card details, select Windows 1064 or of course Windows 11, and download the latest game ready driver by clicking search and then download here. Click download once more and then the installer will download onto your computer. Simply click on it to open it when it's done. Make sure to click OK and wait for the program to extract. When you get to this stage over here, you can select whether you want GeForce Experience or not. I don't, so I'll click that, agree and continue, then custom here, next, and you can choose what to install here. I personally don't use NVIDIA HD Audio either, so I uncheck that and click next to continue with the installation. If you're a couple of versions behind, it's a very good idea to update your graphics drivers. And on top of that, if you haven't ready, do check Windows Update and make sure you're up to date there as well. Hit start, type in update, open check for updates and wait for it to complete here. Download any optional ones as well if you have them available. If you see a pop-up about upgrading to Windows 11, rather avoid clicking this unless you're absolutely comfortable upgrading to Windows 11. Anyways, with that out of the way, what's next? Well, if you're on a notebook, a laptop, or a computer with integrated graphics, as well as a dedicated graphics card, this step is important to you. Hit start, type in GPU, and open graphics settings. Inside of here, you'll want to make sure that you have hardware accelerated GPU scheduling turned on and scroll down over here to graphics performance preference. Select desktop app from the drop down and click browse here. We'll then navigate across to where Apex Legends is installed. If you don't know, you can use something like Steam, right click on Apex Legends, manage, browse local files, and it'll open up a file explorer in the correct place. I'll copy the link at the very top and paste it in here. Then all you have to do is select r5apex.exe, add, and once it shows up on the list, click options, then make sure to select high performance from the GPU drop down here, then click save. Then I'll head back, home, and I'll head into the gaming section. Then on the Xbox game bar tab, make sure to turn this off unless you explicitly use it. Then the game mode section over here should be turned on, as it does give you a little bit of a performance boost. Now let's quickly head back to the Apex Legends files to change a couple of things there. So I'll open up Steam, right click Apex, manage, browse local files. Inside of here, I'll right click r5apex.exe and open up this window here. Head across to the compatibility tab and make sure to disable full screen optimizations here. Then click change high DPI settings, then tick the box at the bottom, select application and OK, apply OK. Now before we continue, let's get into NVIDIA optimization. I'll quickly run through it, and of course if you have an AMD graphics card, you can copy most of the settings here, otherwise you can look up a specific guide for you. I'll right click my desktop and open the NVIDIA control panel. On the top tab here, adjust image settings with preview, simply select use the advanced 3D image settings here, click apply, and then click the take me there button here or head across to manage 3D settings on the left hand side. Then head across to program settings and we'll be selecting Apex Legends from the drop down here. However, if it's not showing on this list, you can click add here and then navigate across to where it is if it's not showing up on this list here either. For me it is, so I'll click it and click add selected program. Now that it's showing on the list, we have a whole bunch of options here that I'll quickly optimize and then you can copy from my settings. Of course, if you're missing settings that I have or the other way around, use common sense to figure out what you should select. You'll probably notice that you already have most of these settings selected as Nvidia has pretty good defaults at the door. So here's the first page of settings, the second page, 
and the last page down here. You, of course, may be missing things like G-Sync, etc, etc, so use common sense for extras that you may have that I don't. Now let's get to cleaning out temporary files on our computer. Hit start and type in disk. Then it'll be hovering over disk cleanup and selecting run as administrator. Then when it pops up, simply select your main drive with windows on it, in my case C, then click OK. It'll then calculate how many files it can clean up. And when it's done, you'll see a whole bunch of stuff here. Now, usually I uncheck recycle bin here, as well as anything else you may find useful, such as say thumbnails, before you run the cleanup as it'll automatically empty and delete all of these files here. Usually I leave recycle bin and thumbnails unchecked. Then simply hit OK and it'll clear out some extra files left on your computer and of course save you some disk space. Depending on how many files it has to move around and or delete, this could take some time. Next up, if you did have recycle bin unchecked, it's a good idea to open it up, go through files you have there and then empty it out when you're done, saving you a couple of extra megabytes to gigabytes. Once it's done, open it up as administrator once again, and this time select a drive that the game is installed on. If you only have one drive, C drive and your game's located there, that's fine. Otherwise, select whatever drive it could be on, click OK, and once again, follow through with the steps. Usually, it'll only be the recycle bin here. Next up, the ultimate power mode. If you already have the ultimate power plan installed and set up, you can skip through this step. Otherwise, in the description down below, you'll find a line of text that you need to copy. I'll hit start, type in power plan, and open up, choose a power plan. In this window here, if you see an ultimate performance plan already, don't worry. Otherwise, if you see something like AMD Ryzen high performance, you may want to select this as it could give you extra performance compared to the ultimate performance plan that we'll be adding now. Usually you'll only have balanced and high performance, but if you'd like the extra performance from ultimate, you'll copy the text from the description down below. Open up a new command prompt window by hitting start, typing CMD and running it as admin, then pasting it in and hitting enter. Upon refreshing the Power Options page, you'll see a new Ultimate Performance Power Plan available here. Awesome! Just note that if you do like your PC turning off after some time, change plan settings and adjust it as necessary. Now, let's quickly get to some launch options before we actually get into the game. I'll open up Steam, right-click Apex Legends and click Properties. If you're using Origin, you'll right-click Apex Legends, then click Game Properties, Advanced Launch Options, and you'll be entering them in the Command Line Arguments section down here. If you have your game on Origin and you'd like it on Steam, find a migration guide in the description down below. Anyways, when this window opens up, you'll be typing in these commands here, which you'll find in the description below. You can copy and paste them in. So the first being high for running the game as high priority, def for skipping the intro, or at least in most cases, force no vsync, which disables vsync and allows you to get lower mouse input latency, full screen, which runs the game in full screen mode, which you should be doing anyway, as it gives you better FPS, FPS max zero, which uncaps your FPS lock. You might want to remove this if you're receiving stuttering in say OBS while you're recording the game, but if you prefer maximum FPS, leave this in. If you do capture the game, you might want to set this to your screen's refresh rate of 60, 144, or leave it as zero for uncapped. On top of this, if you like, you can add hyphen threads followed by a number, say six, to give the game only six threads. This way you can limit it, but you don't need this option as the game will use as many threads as possible by default. Preload here, make sure to preload some textures and the rest in game, making load times a bit better, and of course, FPS. If you'd like FPS to show in game, you can add a plus CL underscore show FPS space one to show an FPS counter in game. I use Steam, so I won't be including that. Then we'll use matte underscore compress textures to use compress textures, CL ragdoll collide zero to disable ragdoll collision, and console over here, which I think allows you to use the console in game, not too sure. You may not want to include this one. You can leave it otherwise if you'd like. Then when you're done, simply close out of it here and we're basically ready to start playing. If you'd like, you can verify the game files to make sure everything's set up and working properly. That way, everything will be exactly as it should be. Otherwise, launch up the game and we'll get to customizing the in-game options. On the main menu, click the settings wheel in the bottom right, then settings, and we'll be heading to video at the very top. In here, there's a couple of obvious settings we'll be changing. First of all, display mode should be set to full screen for the best possible FPS. Aspect ratio should match your monitor, and of course the resolution as well. If you need extra FPS after putting absolutely everything on low, you can adjust this. Otherwise, always leave this on your native resolution to get the least amount of blurriness possible while playing the game. Brightness is user preference and field of view as well. 
Though having higher or lower field of view could give you extra or lower FPS in certain situations. Surprisingly, having this set to a higher number sometimes results in higher FPS. This is all up to your preference and of course what you experience while in game. FOV ability scaling is user preference, and the same goes for sprint view shake, though usually you'll have the set to minimal for the best vision in game. Scrolling down to the advanced settings, we have a couple of things here we should change. So starting at the very top, V-Sync should always be set to off unless you're explicitly experiencing screen tearing. When the top half of your screen renders before the bottom half, and it literally looks like it's tearing. NVIDIA Reflex should be enabled or set to enable plus boost, but usually I'll leave this on just enabled. This is of course only if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. Adaptive FPS target should be set to zero as you don't want to be using this. It can drop your graphics really low in important parts of the game, causing micro stuttering, or of course just making the game look pretty garbage. Having this set to zero is what you want. That way, it also disables adaptive super sampling. Scrolling down, NCA listing should be set to off for a tiny improvement in performance, but you can leave this on if you don't like jagged edges. Texture streaming budget completely relies on what kind of graphics card you have. If you have an older or cheaper graphics card model with less VRAM, you'll need to lower this option here. Otherwise, if you're like me and have a 1080 Ti or a brand new graphics card, you can usually crank this up pretty high without worrying. Texture filtering down here won't affect your GPU at all really, unless it's incredibly old. You can leave this at 16x if you'd like. Anisotropic filtering, you'll notice, doesn't cause any change in FPS. Ambient occlusion quality over here can cause some FPS the higher that the setting is set, so I'd usually set this to disabled for the highest possible FPS. Then we get to shadows. Shadows are something you're not going to be staring at while you're playing a Twitch shooter, so turning them all the way down will help with FPS dramatically and not really have an impact on your experience other than a positive one. So, sun shadow coverage, low. Sun shadow detail, low. Spot shadow detail, all the way down to disabled. Volumetric lighting, disabled. And dynamic spot shadows, disabled as well. Scrolling down to the very bottom, we have a few more options here. Now this next section, of course, also depends on what kind of graphics card you'd have. I'd recommend having both of these, model detail and effect detail, be set to either medium or low depending on how you like the game to look and depending on what FPS you get for these both. Impact marks can be set to disabled, as well as setting ragdolls to low down here to decrease the load on your CPU, but of course if you have a beefy CPU you may not notice a difference when these are turned on. I for one usually leave everything in the middle here and set ragdolls to low. And that really covers it for all of the video settings. Click apply in the bottom left and we're effectively done here. On the audio tab you may want to lower music volume while in game to better hear footsteps when the music plays. And of course, sound in background on if you often tab out but would also like to hear footsteps. Beyond that, everything else is up to your user preference. And that's really about it for this optimization guide. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Technobe here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.